the existence of anti-retreat units in the Russian army has been confirmed by the British intelligence. So poor and inexperienced Russian conscripts have only two options – either go forward and face Ukrainians or go back and face your own comrades. I will also briefly talk about rapidly developing situation in Kherson and how Putin is destroying Russia from the inside through his partial mobilization. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and see some most recent footage. And our first video comes to us allegedly from the east of Ukraine, where we can see Ukrainians who seize the abandoned Russian tank. And you have probably already heard about this, that Russia is one of the biggest sponsors of military equipment to Ukraine. And the way it happens is whenever Russians retreat, they leave their military vehicles behind and Ukrainians just take them. But then we'll also have this picture, which shows us how many military vehicles NATO countries transferred to Ukraine. And as you can see, it is estimated that Ukraine received approximately 2330 armored vehicles, which represent only 1.2% of total NATO's inventory. They also received 525 artillery systems and 58 helicopters and planes. And at the same time, America recently announced another $400 million support package to Ukraine. And this will mainly include tanks, armored personnel carriers and drones. Our next picture comes to us from Belarus, from Baranovichi airfield. And as you can see from this satellite image, there is an increase in the presence of Russian forces in this airport. And specifically what we can see is this Russian tent city and the large number of parked military vehicles. Our next video comes comes to us from the border between Ukraine and Belarus. And as you can see right here, a Ukrainian armored vehicle has been spotted crossing the border. And if you remember, just a couple of days ago, Belarus intercepted a Ukrainian drone. So once again, I just hope that Belarus and Russia will not call this an invasion from Ukraine. And now we go to the capital of Ukraine, Kiev. And as you can see right here, President Zelensky is giving an interview for his his upcoming documentary on Netflix. And the place where they record this interview is in Kiev subway, which as you can see has not stopped working for regular people. Alright, and now let's see some videos from the east. And while I'm going there, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel if you don't want to miss any future updates. You can also follow me on Instagram, because today we'll be voting for my future haircut. Alright, and our first video comes to us from Bakhmut, where we can see a Russian tank, which is operated by Wagner forces, which is being immobilized by Ukrainians. But unfortunately, in the next video from the same city, we can see a Ukrainian short-range missile system Strela-10 being destroyed by Russians. Allow me to quickly show you just one more video and one more picture before I update you on Ukraine's counteroffensive. And trust me, <laughs> this picture will be funny. Right, so the next video comes to us from Donetsk city center. And as you can see, they installed this sign, which says zero kilometers until Russia, kinda implying that Donetsk is part of Russia. But either intentionally or unintentionally, they left so much free space on this sign. So I will not be surprised if eventually this zero will become 60 kilometers. Or who knows? maybe even more. And finally, Russia will be reportedly cooperating with North Korea in terms of fashion. And right here we have the most recent government-approved style for well-behaved citizens. And I mean, who needs like Gucci, Prada and Louis Vuitton when you can have this? I recently received this translated intercepted phone calls by Russians who complain about their officers who do not care about them and practically turn them into fertilizer. And if you want to hear to the full versions of these phone calls, in addition to other footage from today's episode, please consider checking my Patreon. The proceeds will be donated to Ukraine and you can find all the useful links down below. Alright, and now let me briefly 
briefly update you on Ukraine's counteroffensive in the East. According to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Ukrainians continue their counteroffensive operations along Svatovy Kriminna Road, while the main focus of Russians was next to Bakhmut, Avdiivka, and Donetsk city. At the same time, Russians prematurely deploy these new conscripts west of Donetsk region just so they don't lose any territories. Which basically means that they sacrifice hundreds or even thousands of their soldiers not just to advance in Donetsk region, but not to let Ukrainians push them back. And then on this map we can see the most significant fighting in the last 24 hours. And as you can see, the most combat actions are happening next to Kriminna, Lysychansk, Pakrovsky, Donetsk city and Vuhlidar. And right here are the changes in territorial control over the last 24 hours. And as you can see, Ukrainians were able to fully liberate Berestova and contest Novoselivsk. And before we talk about rapidly developing situation in Kherson region, here are just a couple more statements from the same report. First of all, Russians continued its efforts to connect the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant to its own power grid. And then it has been reported that the Russian military is facing extreme difficulties with the resupply of critical military equipment. And I mean, you have probably noticed that the number of Russian attacks using Iranian drones decreased significantly. And well, according to the Minister of Defense of Ukraine, Oleksiy Reznikov, Russia has almost completely depleted its inventories of those drones. And speaking about the logistics, right now I will show you those disruptions both in the east and in the south. And let's begin in the east, where this Svatovy Kriminna highway is one of the major resupply roads for Russians. And as you might already know, one of the main goals of Ukrainians in this territory is to capture this road, which first of all will cut the resupplies to Lysychansk and Severodonetsk and then potentially all the way to Luhansk. But then Russians have another major transportation hub in the east, which is Troitsky. And theoretically they can continue using this road, which goes through Starobilsk, to resupply themselves in Luhansk. And that is why, most likely, the next goal of Ukrainians will be to capture this road as well. And speaking about the south, a very big portion of their logistics comes from Crimea, as well as this system of rail tracks represented by white lines, which goes through Mariupol, Melitopol and Kherson. First of all, if Ukraine can recapture Kherson, this will disrupt the logistics of Russia in the southern western part of this region. Most likely, Ukrainians will then start advancing towards Melitopol, disrupting this part as well. The ultimate goal will be to critically damage the Crimean bridge, which will leave the Russian forces in Crimean Peninsula with very limited options to resupply themselves. And sooner or later, the liberation of Crimea will happen, and this will be the total defeat for Putin. And by the way, you can access all the maps and additional material that I was using today for free in our Discord. The link will be down below. Alright, and before we talk about these anti-retreat units in the Russian army, here is your quick update from Kherson and whether Russians are setting a trap for Ukrainians. First of all, according to the same report by the Institute for the Study of War, it is still unclear whether Russians will defend Kherson city, because they continue to build the defensive positions and at the same time some Russian forces retreat to the left side of Dnipro river. If you remember from my yesterday's video, Russians were removing their flags from administrative buildings in Kherson, which allowed many people to think that Russians are probably preparing to surrender the city. But after thinking for at least two minutes, many people started realizing that probably this can be a trap. And the first and the most obvious option is that Russians will lure Ukrainians inside Kherson city so that they can attack them from different sides. And the second option is that Russian soldiers will disguise themselves as civilians so that it will be much harder for Ukrainians to realize who are they fighting against. And at the same time, if there are any casualties among Russian soldiers, they will show the rest of the world how Ukrainians are eliminating unprotected civilians. But today 
day, we received even more confusing and contradicting information from the Russian infiltrators. Such as, for example, Kirill Stremausov, who this morning announced that the entire Kherson city will have a 24-7 curfew. And then later this day, he deleted his previous video and recorded a new one, where he said that there will be no restrictions at all inside the city. He said that the Russian soldiers will protect everyone, and then, with the eyes full of fear, he said that there is no panic. Ok, and now let's talk about these anti-retreat units in the Russian army. According to the British intelligence, they were able to confirm the presence of such forces. And what they basically do is that whenever Russian soldiers desert the army, or whenever they run trying to save their lives, they are ordered to eliminate this cowards. And I mean, the last time this tactics was used was approximately 80 years ago, during the Second World War. And the notorious leader of the Soviet Union at that time was Joseph Stalin, responsible for eliminating 27 million of his own people. So yes, those Russians who never lived during Stalin and for some reason wanted this regime to come back, they now have a perfect opportunity to experience it themselves. The morale of the Russian soldiers, as you already know, is extremely low, and now imagine where it will go after these anti-retreat units. As an inexperienced recent Russian record, you can either go forward and have a very high chances of being terminated by Ukrainians, or you can go back and this chance increases to a hundred percent. So as you can imagine, the morale of the Russian soldiers it just can't get any lower right now. But there is another, even bigger problem which is arising at this very moment in Russia, which is the direct consequences of Putin's partial mobilization. Many Russians left the country when this war started. And after the announcement of this partial mobilization back in September 21st, this number just skyrocketed. A vast majority of my friends back in Russia, they fled the country. And these are very very smart people with their master's degrees, PhDs in various fields. In other words, the long-term disastrous consequences for Russia is that its prime workforce is leaving the country. This active, ambitious and intelligent generation, which was supposed to inherit Russia, is simply not there. And those who stayed, they are trained and brainwashed to be self-sufficient and not rely on the rest of the world. And yes, this is happening in the 21st century, where two people in the completely opposite parts of the world can get into instant connection thanks to the internet. And the reason why the modern world is developing so fast, it is because nations cooperate with each other. They are sharing their knowledge discoveries and technologies, and they can do it in a split of a second. So, whenever a country separates itself from this highly integrated world, whenever it forces its smart and intelligent people to leave the country, there is only one potential outcome. But I guess it does not matter much for Putin, because most likely he will not be there to witness the results of his, let's say so, questionable work. If you want to support my work financially, please consider becoming my channel member, use a PayPal link or become my Patreon. And if you missed my yesterday's episode, the video will be to the left. All the other useful links can be found to my right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, Tavarishi, and see you on Monday.